ball. Hello. Uh, hi. <laughs> um, hey there. I'm Shane. Um, welcome to our my podcast. No, that's no, absolutely not. The Wasteland Podcast, hosted by yours truly, Shane. Today on the podcast, I have two guests. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Tyler. I am the co-host. <laughs> Tyler. Okay. <laughs> and Jeremiah. Hi, I'm... I'm, uh... The more important... I'm the special guest. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what this Tyler guy is talking about. Like. I'm the co-host. He's a little delusional. I've been on every episode. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're the only one that's been on every episode. Yeah, I'm aren't the only you? one who's been on every episode. <laughs> he has to. <laughs> now, I thought about it before. If I ever get sick, I would just like let you guys record, and I would just like fuck off, and then <laughs> just be like, "All right, <laughs> now I'll just edit it later." <laughs> <laughs> but I just been... like laid up with COVID in your room, me and Shane are out here. <laughs> well, if I got COVID, I probably wouldn't. I just no. we'd probably just have to cancel. But yeah. We did, that's what we did last time when, like, the bakery had that outbreak, but me and Shane never got it. Nope. Never, ever, yep. never. I've never, I've never experienced ever. it. It's I've never experienced what Trump has experienced. It's crazy, because all of us have been around yes. a fair amount of people who got COVID. I was really sure I had it when, when everyone had it, because Val had it and she worked when she had it. Yeah. I was around Val a lot of that. Yeah. That day too. No, I was really sure I had it. And then I didn't. And I was like, okay. Yeah. And then when I went to the, uh, that gathering and yeah. my friend got it. Yeah. I was sure I had it. Yeah. And then I was kind of like, I was like, if Shane has it, then I have to go get tested. But I was like, I'm just going to wait and see if Shane has it. Well, we never really came in contact. And I left yeah. right when I found out. I, I if, if we didn't go through it already, I probably wouldn't would have been way more paranoid. But the fact that like I sat with Val and she talked to me and we shared a pizza when she had it, and then and then, and then like, and I was I was not wearing my mask while eating the pizza, but like she was talking to me with her mask on. And it's like, oh, yeah, it works. Yeah, yeah, oh. it just it literally just works. No, I, I, I I think we're just built different. I don't I don't think masks have anything <laughs> uh, to do with it. I don't know about <laughs> I don't know about your dead parents, but <laughs> how's it going? It's like um, it's like, but I'm different. I know your grandma died from COVID, but I'm built different. <laughs> yeah, it's like, but I'm different. It's like, but I'm different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, That's us. That's a great meme. That's I, Trump. I He's can't remember different. the original. Yeah. Or, There's something about, like, I would just go World back War in time. World War II, yeah. I would go was, back in time and stop Hitler or something like that. And... My, it was like, my grandpa died in... in yeah. World War Two, and he's like, "R.I.P. to your grandpa," but I'm different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um. Yeah, COVID. It's still happening. It's still going on. We're watching the debate before your Jeremiah got here. Um, we're actually able to talk about it on time for once. Mm-hmm. And, and I have no idea what they're going to be talking about. I'm not going to go. I don't want to go too inch too into it. Uh, I wish you watched it because it made me like Biden more. And yeah. I feel like people who are on the fence about Biden should watch it. But um, I will say uh, there was a moment where they were talking about how if we don't do something about COVID, then it's estimated we'll have to deal with it all the way up until like 2022 and stuff like that. I would have guessed longer, honestly. Like I could see this going till I can't deal with it anymore. The whole twenty twenties. I'm done with it already. I'm I'm <laughs> definitely I'm I done with do it, it too, but I could picture us like I like between that and global warming, it's like Biden has to win. He just literally the, has to win. Like the moderator said that even with vaccines we would still have to wear masks yeah. and social distance That's what, yeah. well into Yeah, Trump 2020. Trump's talking about if we got the vaccine by the end of the year. And we'll then and then she she said the vaccine might not come out to 2021, which is reasonable. It's only got a few months left. But it's like, 
even if we have the vaccine, we have to wait till 2022 and we'll still have to wear masks and social distance and all that stuff. And it's like, ugh, I can't, I can't, I can't. We need, we need to start enforcing uh, policies to separate people so we stop giving it to each other. She said like 16, was it 16? It was 16,000 people died since the last debate with Trump and Biden. Yeah. Which it was, that was like three weeks ago, right? Or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. 16,000 people died in the last three weeks? That's fucking ridiculous. Biden said that before the end of the year, 200,000, it's yeah. estimated that another, another 200,000 200, yeah, 200, will die. Americans will die. I I saw a statistic that uh, one in every 1,000, I don't remember if it was black men or just black people in general, yeah. have died from COVID. Like, not even caught it, it have died from COVID so has, far. It's affected people of different uh, classes disproportionately, which I'm not sure why exactly, but... The lower class... I mean, we're all, like, in yeah. the lower class, and we've all had to be working. Like, we've been... Yeah, they're probably, the, the they're reason, probably working in shitty conditions. Yeah, like, I mean, like, we've all been around people who've caught it, yeah. and we just ha have managed not to catch it. Yeah. But, like, that's it's very much a lower working class kind of sickness. Like, if you're bill gates you know or whatever you can right, right. go sit in your house for the rest of your life and never have some to worry about bills yeah some people can take off work but like my older brother's a libertarian he was like well i had money saved up because he they actually couldn't work when when we were still working all three of us were still working he, like right when this all happened yeah, we were very fortunate yeah no we got we honestly got lucky compared to other businesses um especially because a lot of people even if even if they could have even if they just didn't give a shit about catching it not all their businesses were good businesses for during a pandemic and they would have no customers anyway right like imagine how flower shops and stuff are yeah, doing no, right now like no, it's like just, no like i mean i guess they're probably no, doing okay now just they could do fine graves and stuff but like <laughs> <Graves>. <laughs> no but now now because people kind of chilled out and i don't think i don't know if that's for the better but people kind of chilled out and businesses are probably doing okay ish now compared to how when it first started but when it first started, no, there was, you could just have a business that's just going to die overnight because you're going to have no customers. I mean, this is, yeah, like economically, this is probably the greatest recession we've had since the 20s. Like, yeah. you know, since the Great Depression, like the recession that hit before the Depression. Yeah. We're in that right now. We might, yeah, kind of, we really, might have another Great Depression and, yeah, we're going to need to do some, and see the, that the, shit. And Trump's solution is to just go back to work. And I mean, yeah, it, it, it's better than what we had, but it's like, this is not sustainable. Like, we can't live like this. We need to end this, like, now. And other countries, you know, uh, uh, yeah, and like Australia and New Zealand, they don't even wear masks anymore because it's such a low risk now. Japan, too, I think. Yeah. Yeah, Japan killed it really well because they, a lot of Asian countries already, like South Korea, they just always wore the masks whenever they had a cold or anything. So, which I mean, it's funny because uh, Kim, like, one of our bosses, she lived in japan and she's been to china and all that stuff yeah she she was in like okinawa right yeah like, yeah well i don't, i i think okinawa i don't really know off the top of my head but it's the island one the island where all the people live to be like 100 years old <laughs> but um she was like i just way before the pandemic happened she said i wish americans could normalize wearing masks when you're sick because she wanted to just come to work sick because she because she's just a workaholic wanted to just keep working just wore a mask that way she doesn't get anyone else sick yeah and it's like yeah that's what they do in other asian countries and it's like but here we like won't even wear it during a pandemic so yeah well why should we wear a mask when it's it's a hoax <laughs> uh, check i me. mean i mean i guess he got me there. after when, once biden wins the it's just not going to exist anymore because it's an entire democratic plot against Trump. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Across the entire fucking world. But then Trump got Everyone it. Everyone is against Trump but in then, the entire world. But Trump then got it. Yeah. But he survived because it's obviously not that big of a deal. Oh, yeah, you're right. He's built different, too. Yeah. He's built different. Trump might actually be. Someone said that Trump might even be like the. Uh, the he might. The antidote might be his blood or something like that. It's like you guys are really far out there. Like you guys are really crazy. Well, Trump probably retweeted that. Maybe. 
He's you like, know, yes, take my blood. It is the cure. I saw a picture of, uh, you know, like they always draw Trump shirtless with like muscles. It's just weird. <laughs> just don't draw him shirtless with muscles. Just draw him wearing a suit. You don't have to make him all fat like he really is. Which, by the way, I'm going to post a picture right here of one of the shots during the debate. Front on, he looks like such a normal person. And then when it shows a side angle, he looks like a like a psychic pebble sketch. Like, he's just like, he looks like the, the Grinch or something. He's like, or like, he looks like Dr. Eggman from Sonic. Like, his body doesn't make any sense. Like, it's just fucking no, weird. I don't, I don't know how he stands like that. Yeah. He's like, got, like, he's like, he's I've like, heard he's got a disorder that makes him hunch like that it's so weird looking he's got like an hourglass figure but it's like all fucking like <laughs> squished together or something and like it's all out of order he like leans forward yeah he leans forward he leans forward and sticks his butt out his yeah his ass is way out there like he's a fucking woman from like the like the i don't know the victorian era or some shit <laughs> it doesn't make any sense but anyway what was i talking about <laughs> i don't even know Oh, they always draw Trump, the cartoonist, the political cartoonist. They draw Trump, like, muscular. And it's like, just draw him normal. But why you make it weird? But I just saw one today that was Trump with no shirt on, with huge pecs and abs. And he's wearing only gray sweatpants. And it said, gray sweatpants season. Now, if you don't know, why do girls like gray sweatpants season? It's because they get to see some bulge action from guys, right? And so they drew Trump with an enormous cock <laughs> that went down past his knee, and some of his pubes were showing. And I'm just sitting here like, I don't understand Doesn't Republicans. He like, isn't he like walking by? He's walking Biden. by Biden and Kamala Harris and someone else. Yeah. And all three of them are like, oh, I want to fuck Trump. They're all like super horny. They're all doing yeah. like the thing like when you have to pee really bad. Yeah. They're all doing that because they're so horny. And they're like sweaty and red in the face. Yeah. They all want to. It makes no sense. Is it, was it Nancy Pelosi? I feel like the third one. No, it was like two dudes. It was like Biden, another dude, and Kamala Harris. And they're all like. I thought it was, it was Pelosi. Was it Pelosi? Biden and another girl. I thought it was Harris, but maybe it was Pelosi. I don't know. I'm, I'm hopefully I can find it because apparently we've all seen it. But that was it's like, aren't you guys against gay marriage? Like I don't understand. <laughs> why do you draw Trump like that? <laughs> why does it have to be? Why can't you just draw him like a normal? You, if you just drew him as a rectangle, I would leave you alone. You don't have to draw him super accurate, but don't draw him shirtless. With a giant cock. <laughs> That's just weird. I don't get it. They also, they draw his hair like super, like super big and like, like he has so much. Again, why? <laughs> they also do the thing where his, cause he's shirtless, his whole body's tan cause he's got the fake spray tan. And it's like, okay, come on. His hands are literally pale. His ears are pale. His neck. His, like, it's such an obvious spray tan. <laughs> the first debate. Like, you could see the goggle marks. Like, it was yeah. like he walked straight out of the, the tanning booth Yeah, no, it looked, right on stage. Some days it looks better than others. I will say, it was it is weird, because, like, if you watch, like, Fox versus CNN, they will, like, change the colors, and Trump will appear more orange. And that coloration will also make Biden look more, like, more whitish. And they did that to uh, Bernie, they, to too. Bernie they too. made Bernie super red they made look super and red. made Trump look super orange, so, and then they make Biden look... They made they made Biden normal. look more normal, but if you watch Fox, Trump's looks like probably how he normally does, or or, or maybe they alter it too. I don't know. I don't even know which one's the real one. But what probably I, neither of them are real. We're we're watching Fox, and Biden looks like pale as a ghost, and Trump's spray tan looks more normalish. But then you can see the neck and it's and the ears, and it's very clearly a huge different in skin tone. I think I think that's something that doesn't get focused on enough because it's so much more subtle than it used to be yeah. is it's such a that's a thing. form of propaganda yeah it's like and that's a mild one but like even like yeah so i like aoc and everything but her going on among us that is a form of like yeah that, that's no it is that's, that's that's a chill kind of propaganda but that is it, political advertising yeah on a forum but, aimed at kids it's the same thing but on the other side is like when the army yeah but recruits kids off call of duty uh yeah it is. It 100% is, but she was pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, I, I like her, and she's, it was pretty cool. from what I saw, it seems like she didn't, she she I wasn't mean, predatory like the army is well, like, with Call of Duty, but, like, it is, it is something we need to the thing is with think the, about. With the army, 
the reason why everyone hates it is because they're they're literally trying to tell kids to grow up and like join the army when they grow up and it's really weird <laughs> right uh, they have no business playing video games on twitch to recruit people that doesn't that shouldn't even be allowed and recruiters have always been predatory like. yeah yeah of course but it's like, yeah it was really weird with aoc her whole thing was she just wanted people to go vote but she did like she did try to radicalize people more towards stuff that i agree with so i don't i'm not that critical on it right but she did try to radicalize people on uh healthcare stuff pokimane was on there and i know the leafy fans are gonna unsubscribe if i say anything nice about pokimane so i'll say that she's a thought uh don't pay for her <laughs> but i will say that uh i'm just kidding i i literally don't know anything about pokimane other than she's got a giant booty and she was like so in in canada you just go to the doctor and you just say you need help and they give you it and that's it and you just leave and then aoc's like yeah you can't do that here <laughs> yeah <laughs> like aoc's like i know i'm telling you guys to vote for biden but just on the dl <laughs> we need so we need like medicare for all we need like socialized health care but so she was trying to radicalize people further left, but but also I, I wanted to send it to my friend who's a Zionist uh, Jew, which means that sh they believe that Israel has the right to exist or whatever. It's I don't just know. a different right wing religion. It's yeah. right wing Judaism. Yeah, it's just right wing Judaism. And while they're very Democrat on like everything when it comes to Israel... They turn conservative out of nowhere. It's the same as like Europeans with gypsies. Yeah. Like Europeans will be like, why does America not have socialized health care? And why is there like a, a disparity between races? And then you're like, why are gypsies living in the street? And they're like, fuck you. Gypsies <laughs> deserve to be executed. And it's like, it's like what? Yeah. Like I, when I went to Ireland, I had a cab driver like slow down, point out a gypsy and say, avoid those people. <laughs> They'll throw babies at you and rob you. Yeah. And it was like, what? Like, it just looks like a lady in a colorful dress. Like, <laughs> chill out, dude. Uh, the scene in Borat where he goes to the uh, the yard sale, uh, and he he's like, "Gypsy, I'm going to take your yeah. tears." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to. I I kind of want to rewatch it before we watch too. But you will either give them to me or I will take them from you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. We have to. We'll have right to go. Right We're, when he gets to New York, he's like, I came with a, a suitcase full of clothes and a jar full of gypsy tears to protect me from AIDS. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to have a Borat section before this ends because Borat 2 comes out uh, Friday, tomorrow. Uh, after this podcast is already out, it's going to be out. But we're excited to watch Borat 2. But uh, what was I talking about? about fucking. Uh, radicalizing. Jews. Oh, Jews. <laughs> the fucking Jews. No, it's just. Got a bunch of cock sucking Jews <laughs> up in here. Bunch of fucking no. Back to Borat. <laughs> the real no. Sasha, Sasha Baron Cohen is literally Jewish. He literally like has spent time in Israel. Just so everyone knows, but when when Borat. when the character Borat says all this evil stuff about Jews, he's You're Jewish. Jew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They like chase and beat like a guy in a like a gross like giant green costume, and they call it a Jew. Yeah. Just so everyone it's knows. And he the is woman Jewish. Eggs and all the kids come out yeah. and start beating it. <laughs> Sasha Baron Cohen can make those jokes because he's, he's making fun of the people who were we racist have a huge towards him. In Kazakhstan, yeah. Economy, what was it like? Economy, uh, something poverty, of poverty and, and Jew. Jew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. So I love them. basically, I wanted to send my friend who is very liberal the stream of aoc playing among us i mean uh, hassan piker was on he was the guy who like, got everything uh organized and it was like jack septicai moist critical toast i don't know who toast is but my friend said they love toast they always watch toast um i was someone who pokemon plays with basically but pokemon was on it was like a lot of pokemon's friends and then some of Hassan Piker's friends. I like Hassan. Hassan is the dude who said America deserved 9-11. And then everyone shit their pants. And he said, in that same quote, he said, America deserved 9-11. And then he paused and said, in Minecraft. Not in real life. Just in Minecraft. And then later on said, in the in, literally within like five minutes, said, 
just so we all know about what I said, that's a joke. <laughs> I meant that be- our our foreign policy created a, a, an environment where 9-11 was a, a response to us. I'm not saying that people deserve to die. I'm just saying that... That we response needed... was inevitable. Yeah. And basically <laughs> what happened was the clip where he said America deserves 9-11 got all over the place. And what happened was was that um, there was a, a New York Times post that was like, AOC played Among Us. It was great. It was so cool. She's so quirky and cute. Hassan Piker hosted it. He said America deserved 9-11. We're not going to provide any more context about that. <laughs> <laughs> and like, it's just like, oh, okay, you guys are going to just smear Hassan like crazy because he's a super leftist who loves Bernie Sanders. But uh, Elon Omar was on too. Yeah, yeah. And people I hate her because she is not for Israel. But does she think that Israel doesn't need to exist? I'm not I don't even know her actual ideas, but I can't imagine she does. Like she's just not she's very pro Muslim because she's Muslim. I don't know what to she's one of how many Muslim Congress people do we have? I don't think there's like 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 it's far (laughs) it's like two or three. It's like Omar. That's and maybe some of Omar's friends. Omar's the only female Muslim we have. I know that for sure. Yeah. And she's one of the very small amount of, like, millennial people. And they're, I think the only millennials are all women anyway. So, but yeah. Most of the progressives are, too. Yeah, yeah. most of the progressives are women. Except for Malarkey. I think his name's Ed Malarkey. He's, and then Sanders. Yeah, well, yeah. And Bernie Sanders. Sanders is, like, an he, he's, old he's Jew. A, he's a senator. Yeah. But, yeah. If we're just talking in general, yeah. Oh, I thought he was in... Con- okay, yeah. I, I for the longest time I thought AOC was in, a senator like him and I I was yeah but no, he's a senator she's a congresswoman it's confusing Omar is a congresswoman obviously because they're friends but Omar was on too and I couldn't send my friend who's a Zionist Jew because she would have been like I'm going to kill Omar <laughs> right and it's like yeah Omar is considered controversial because Republicans fucking despise her and think she's like the worst thing ever to happen and it's like. But it's and so some people might say, oh, it's radical because Omar was on. I'm like, I know, but they're friends. They're just friends in real life. I don't she, tell you. She's also a congresswoman. It's not yeah that radical. And uh, yeah, and it's like also AOC is probably like aligned at 100 percent with her politically. So don't like <laughs> maybe not 100 percent. They're not because of like she's not. There is a lot of right wing stuff in Islam. Yeah, like just like all well, religions. Yeah, like, but I don't think I don't think Omar Omar is an, an American Muslim. It's not like Omar is fucking. Yeah, women shouldn't be able to drive or whatever. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. But you have to yeah, it is uh Hassan has this great point. He has a stream once where he was like, You know who's more progressive than Christians? Muslims. And he like started talking about all these different examples of why that is. And it's like, yeah, if you look at the the countries with religious theocracies, the third world countries, they're gonna look bad. But if you look at like Muslims in Europe and America they are far more progressive than American Christians and es- European Christians, even so. Especially and Asian in Christians. the countries where we haven't fucked with them at all, yeah. like Iran or was it Iraq? I don't remember. Iran was the one we like fucked into the ground. Yeah, that, okay, that, yeah. That was like the whole world fucking with them, but America played a big part in that too. Pakistan, no, that was, right? That was pretty much America. We talked about this in a podcast once. Iran, yeah. So Iran put in, or America put in a puppet. Yeah. Uh, like basically a dictator. We put yeah. in Saddam President. Hussein, right? No, 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 no not ever someone, ran. We put in someone else. Saddam was in Iraq. Yeah, we put in some other democratic, democratic yeah. leader. We put in a leader as a puppet. We put in a bullshit leader and kind of like he stole was, their democracy. He shit them. on Iran, fled to the U.S. to seek asylum, yeah. and then a radical Muslim, like Islamic, yeah, a ra- a guy who took wa- over Iran, a guy who wanted to create a religious theocracy, which means like. Your Which, your political your like your government is just based around religion. That's what theocracy but, is. But that's what the people wanted. Yeah, because they, they were sick of him. of American intrusion, like intrusion. Right. They wanted whatever. him in, but then America came back and said, "No, no, no." Yeah, and they either had him killed or just they threw him out of the country. Yeah, they and reinstated the the dictator. They caused an, like a military coup or whatever. It's yeah, called. yeah, yeah. And so all of Iran fucking hated Which, America. That's that's the big thing with Bolivia is that the socialist. It was literally between, not, you know, people called Trump a fascist, but the Bolivian 
guy is a literal fascist that like America like installed. Trump wants to be a fascist, yeah. But like this guy is that, yeah, yeah. And then the the leader, the guy who won the election in Bolivia, is a socialist. And again, people call Bernie Sanders a socialist, but this guy's a real socialist. And it's like he uh, he won fair and square, and everyone started making jokes about like, oh no, like military american military and watch like american military when their when their military coup fails yeah and everyone was like sad well, the same what happened to iran basically yeah. happened in vietnam as well yeah which led to the vietnam and korea right like yeah that yeah. had to do with yeah. the korean war yeah. it was a cold war puppet battle of we back south korea and yeah. russia yeah. back north korea that is exactly what happened in vietnam yeah it's almost Except like a majority of people in <laughs> Vietnam wanted a communist regime. Yeah. It's almost like uh, American and it used to be in the Britain. Britain had a lot of intrusionism too, but <laughs> they, it's they like, like invented that. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Like, no, Britain, that was Britain's bread and butter for a long time. <laughs> they were like, the sun will never set on the British empire. as so they like killed a million brown people yeah, and like, just... <laughs> And fucking... then they quit killing brown people, and now they're just a tiny little island. They're like, <laughs> they're like Britain was literally like taking over the entire fucking world, they and then like, like a third of the world. Then like Nazi Germany was like, ho ho ho, and we're like, hey, they're evil. And then Britain's like, yes, they're evil. <laughs> and then uh, we well, like, no, America, it was France. France was like, uh, I don't like what they're doing. Oh no, yeah, well yeah. And yeah. England was like, I don't fucking care. <laughs> Yeah. And then America's like, I don't fucking care. Yeah. Because and then, they were worried about upsetting uh, Germany because yeah. they yeah, they didn't yeah, they didn't want to necessarily fight against Germany. They right didn't away. want another world war. Yeah. But Germany was breaking like all the laws of right. the Treaty of Versailles and France was like, uh Guys, can we not? Yeah, we have to do something yeah. about this. Can we stop this? And they're like, No, we don't want to anger them. Yeah. We don't want to start another war. It, it got to the point where eventually Britain had to get involved, and America still wasn't involved. No, so America wasn't involved for a long time. And then America, Japan. Yeah, America, I know America did eventually yeah. fight Germans, but yeah, they mostly fought Japan at first. And that's because they, Japan started it. So, Well, Japan was more of a threat to us. Yeah. That's because they were closer to us. That's why we attacked them first. Because basically we're like, Britain's got it kind of under control in England. Yeah. Hitler's not a big problem we were, right now. Japan is a big problem. So yeah. we'll go fuck them up, and then we'll go help them in England. We, we were doing what uh, Europe does whenever we are in fucking wars. There's like, ah, oh, that's their thing. Yeah. They're, this horrible shit, that's all them. We're not a part of this. We didn't want to get involved yeah. in another war. We're just like, we're, we're going to be in our continent. We're going to mind our business. Yeah. I mean, we've drug them into almost all of our wars, though. Yeah, recently. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, after, even, after I mean, they... Too. Even the Civil War, I think. Civil um, War? They were... Uh, well, we, we got in contact with England about the, the Civil, Civil War. War. Well, I didn't know that. Because they were going to... Uh, the South contacted England. Oh, my gosh. And they were like, hey, help us out. And they were like... England was like, eh, we don't really do the whole slave thing anymore, but, like, <laughs> you do you. And then Lincoln contacted England. He was like, here's the real shit going down. Yeah. And then I think they might have sent us money or something. I think, oh, yeah. I, I think we also tried to contact France. But that France makes sense. Was going under the... We were we were friends with France during the Revolutionary War. We've been friends that. with well, France since before the Revolutionary yeah, War. Yeah. Well, like... the thing is, is that France was going through the French Revolution at the time. Yeah. And so they were like, "Our government's kind of shit right now. We can't help you." But they uh, did we send like, a oh. general over to train our troops. Yeah. And a he was at, a, did... yeah openly gay in the Revolutionary general. War. Yeah. Didn't didn't no, didn't the was French in the, was it in the Revolutionary or Civil? That was it the was Revolutionary. The revolutionary. Okay. And he then, was an openly gay French I didn't general. know that. Because he also fought in the Indian Wars before the Revolutionary War, I believe. Okay, the French and Indian... French and oh, Indian okay. War that we fought on the side of the French mm -hmm. to yeah. kick yeah, the Indians out. So and, I, yeah. I thought that the French just kind of aided us in general after we did that first initial like pushback. What was that day? Called? Like the first night when we attacked the Red... Uh, during the Revolution or what was that called? The one with the painting. Yeah, of the famous painting everyone crossing, crossing over. the uh, we, Potomac we attacked or whatever. Them like, we, we attacked them like... like the Deli Delaware. The Delaware, We okay, attacked yeah. them like during Christmas night or some shit. Yeah, it was a surprise. We and that was actually... We literally just like came in and started like stabbing them in their sleep mm -hmm. and shit. That was actually the Germans we attacked. Yeah, they yeah sent... the British had German soldiers. and German we wanted... mercenaries. So we wanted French people to help us because they had, they had all this wealth. So they had all these soldiers we... from Germany who were like well-trained. We did something that Vietnam replicated. Yeah. 
Yeah, no. What, what Honestly, we did, because, what we did was well, very unorthodox. It was well, no one did that at the time. Right? They were like, "It's Christmas. They're not going to attack us." And then yeah, we, we did. We were literally like, "This is war. We literally don't give a shit." Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's something we learned from the Native Americans is guerrilla warfare. Yeah. <laughs> during so, like yeah. during the that's uh, the only way we beat them was guerrilla warfare. Yeah. That's what America. So, like, I feel like that is in general the best form of warfare mm -hmm. because you lose less people. And you attack everywhere at once instead of having these big fronts that, oh, like, yeah. nowadays, you know, you got drones, you got tanks. A big front is going to be bad if you're, like, so, not the side with drones and tanks. But if you can come out like the Taliban, yeah. just like a truck with a 50 cal machine gun on back, just go <laughs> kill six that's guys and do. disappear. That is, like... The hand run, yeah. yeah. That's what it you is, have to do to fight a bigger government than you. It is, Which it is we something were the that, that um, usually smaller governments with not a lot of yeah soldiers resort to whereas works. before that time guerrilla warfare was non-existent yeah wars were fought where people lined up and well, just shot at each other because they and had that's how the civil as, war was fought yeah as uh as uh was it it's a common theme with uh white people uh taking something that was underground from brown people and then making it ours and saying we're the first ones who did it yeah we're just like, hey, Native Americans, nice, well, nice tactics there. We're gonna. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> but no, but it is, it is, it is a big and deal it, because it was the first time the British were like, "What the fuck are you yeah, guys doing?" Yeah, it's the first time. Because yeah, we did literally line up. They and did just shoot it each before. Other. You just had to die. You know what I'm right, right. During the Civil War, you just had to die. It is the <laughs> first time when British what? was faced with those kind of tactics. And during the Civil War, wasn't that the first uh, trench warfare war? Like they didn't have, did uh, I think they had barbed wire already? I know they had trenches for the Civil War. I'm not, I'm not too sure on that part. Yeah, I'm not sure either. But I, I, I know during Civil War they would literally line up and fire muskets at each other. But then you could be right that they did other things too. I know the Revolutionary War was a lot of lining up, yeah. and then we it, it we started doing our guerrilla warfare shit. Yeah. And yeah, and then I, and then came out of I the thought. trees. You know, oh, they're in the basically, trees. Like basically, we like we got all the we got. We did. We won a major victory. That's I, what I thought is when the French were like, "Okay, now we'll help you." Because at first it was like a losing battle. There was no point in sending help to uh, America. But then they're like, "Okay, now we will." That's what I always thought. So that our might have I th that might have been true, but I think we were allies with France. Yeah, we were. Yeah. We, we were of, friends, but yeah. they, they just didn't want to send help because yeah. it was like, I think that you yeah. guys can't win. And we're like, trust me, we're gonna try this. We're gonna do this awesome <laughs> shit. We're gonna do some like. Metal Gear Solid, James well, Bond shit. And I think it was during the Revo it was during the Revolutionary War, the War of eighteen twelve, um, when England had the best naval army in the world. Yeah. yeah. Um, one guy in a little dinghy boat took down like three or four <laughs> English and, ships, and he was the first privateer. Uh -huh. That was. Uh, I didn't know yeah. what, oh, what's that guy's name? I, I used to. It's, no, I, it's it's um. We have a city in Illinois named after him. We do. Yes, <laughs> it's down south. It's right on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> it's right outside of... Oh, fuck me, what can I think of it? Uh-oh. It is very close. Oh. We just took it up. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't even know the story. But that was awesome. like my... I've loved pirates since I was like little bitty. That was like my favorite historical figure all through elementary school. Yeah, I mean, that sounds awesome. I just don't know anything about it, but I'll probably just pause here. <laughs> what city do you live? Yeah. Uh, John Paul Jones. No. Okay, that's the guy I was Decatur! Decatur. It is Decatur. Decatur? Decatur. Alligator? See you later, De Alligator. Decatur, he's a guy who took out three of the biggest naval ships from the UK or back in the Britain, British. What you were thinking of, was it the Bonhomme Richard? That was a ship. <sighs> ship talk with the Wasteland Podcast. The sh ships? Man, what a bunch of bullshit, am I right? <laughs> Even Decatur. Decatur. Isn't that North? The son of a U.S. naval officer served during the American Revolution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The American Revolution, he took out a bunch of the naval ships by himself. 
Was this like a dinky little boat? Um, man, how come you guys knew about this? Why didn't nobody tell me? <laughs> Why didn't nobody tell me the story about the pirate guy? Dude, like early American history is like minus all the like Slavery. hating hating black people stuff <laughs> was like really dope. Yeah, like that's where like a lot of guerrilla warfare got introduced to the rest of the world. Like Native Americans always fought like that. Yeah, but we kind of introduced it from learning from the Native Americans, like being friends with them until we decided to kill them. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, like oh shit, like this is way better to like you know. You drop out of a tree with a musket, like, five feet in front of a guy, you're never going to miss, and he's going to shit his pants yeah. whenever you do that, because he's waiting for a line of guys. Like, Hold on, I'm looking up the story behind Stephen Decatur. And, and Jeremy so, just explained it good enough. <laughs> in 1804, he led a covert mission to burn the USS Philadelphia that had been uh, captured by Tripolitan, Tripolitan hands. <laughs> mm-hmm. During the Barbary War. Mm-hmm. During the first Barbary War. Wasn't know. that in Africa? Uh, the Barbary Coast? Yeah, Morocco. Mm-hmm. Oh, and so we... Morocco and France are our two mo- longest-term allies. Yeah. So we were probably fighting for Morocco against the British. Mm-hmm. Damn. Most likely. We were anyway, like, Decatur's a fucking badass. Sounds like we were like the opposite of what we are now. Yeah. Like we were one of the little guys yeah. fighting against the we, big guy. We totally were. And we're. now we're one of the big guys crushing all the little guys single handedly. We were back in after World War One, we yeah. declared ourselves the protector of the Western Hemisphere. Yeah. And that if anyone tries to fuck with any country in the Western Hemisphere, we will show up. And then we end up spend all our time in the Eastern Hemisphere anyway. Yeah, yeah. Like, no one's attacked South America except for us for the last, like, <laughs> yeah, hundred years. That is true. It is something that happened. But, and, uh... Yeah. Yeah, the Revolutionary War is kind of fucking badass. So is the Civil War, honestly. Yeah. Civil War is pretty badass, too. The Spanish-American... Like, all the way... Like, World War One and back are, like, super badass wars. Mm-hmm. And then you got World War Two that's, like... Half badass, half not, kind of. Like, it's like, eh, well, there's some shitty shit we did, but, like... Well, yeah, Japanese concentration camps. World War Two revolutionized warfare. The right. Germans actually did. Yeah. Because in World War One, we were still in the... Uh, we still, like, had swords and rode horses. Yeah. And... But they also had tanks. It well, was, like, yeah, like it was the biggest had, slaughter in, like, history. Had tanks and well, trenches and... Did have, like, well, mustard casts and all yeah, sorts yeah, of yeah, yeah. horrible and, shit. And that was before... Shotguns. Yeah. yeah. That and, was before the Treaty of... Uh, before they... The Geneva Convention. Yeah, they right. added to the Geneva, Geneva uh, Convention. But in World War One, we, like, rode horses and shit and had swords. And in World War II, uh, the French tried to... Def- it was either the French or in Africa or something. Yeah. Try to do the same thing. They just were obliterated by Germany because yeah. they had come up with a new strategy, a war strategy, where they would send in, uh, I think it was the tanks first, then air support, and then troops to back up the tanks. Yeah. And people were like, uh, "How do we? Yeah. How do we counter that? Yeah. <laughs> also, because it was almost impossible. You need to be. You need to be a, like an equal sized military force. Basically, Germany had the money. I know that. Like Germany had. Amazing armies at the time. But no one had ever done that before. Right. And now, that is how every war is played out. That is just the baseline of strategy. Yeah. Because it was so effective. Until Obama. <laughs> with his new strategy of remote control airplanes that just bl- bomb everyone, including Americans. <laughs> but yeah. Or until the Vietnam War, where the Vietnam War we where fought guerrilla, we 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 fought guerrilla warfare Jeez. head on. Agent Orange, yeah, fucking up Vietnamese people to this day, like yeah, born with birth we defects killed, and everything. We killed innocent Vietnams, Vietnamese. Yep. Um, oh yeah, so many. Just fucking shot him in the head. So many. We killed so many. Fucking. We, we killed our we own raped allies. And pillaged. Yeah, we raped. Man, we're we're fucking yeah, we, we we're bloodthirsty our... killers, man. These men are killers. I yeah, mean, come on. People would so, be like, "Oh, we're on your side," and they're like, "Yeah, but you look you, like a fucking uh, you seen uh, you saw a Full Metal Jacket now, right? Yeah, 
movies Stanley Kubrick. Yeah, I've seen that one yet. But... God tier movie. I, I the very final moment with the, with the little girl holding the That's gun. That's actually what would fucking happen. Though. Yeah, they killed the little girl and they just like what it, what was it? What did they say? The, I don't it remember. was like they had a word for sex. Like no, I think it was just like sucky sucky. Like no more sucky sucky for her or something like that. Yeah. Like they killed like an underage girl. She was like ten. And she was a sniper that picked off like a bunch of their sh- their troops. That mm-hmm. movie's fucking amazing. <laughs> it's so good. And I think so. Part of that is most people did not sign up to go to Vietnam. No, it wasn't a World War Two kind of war. Yeah. It was so a draft. you get all these like seventeen, eighteen year old kids end up getting drafted, who, and who many of them were against the Vietnam War, and yeah. they get over there and they're in these shitty conditions yep and they're the US doesn't fucking being care they're being told to slaughter dozens of people a day and you know that's like some hardcore ptsd yeah and then they get fucked up and they end up doing they all that like die. they watch their friends die in terrible ways yeah Vietnam, like well world war Two was the first time we ever like realized that ptsd was a real thing yeah because in world war one people would shoot over people's heads they didn't want to kill each other because why would you want to kill somebody? Yeah. But in World War Two, they're like, no, you, won't, we're gonna train you to kill. Yeah. You're going to kill. In World, War, then, World War One, they just called it shell shock. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. And then in Vietnam, it became even worse because we trained them even harder to kill, and then they they killed. Yeah. And they raped and pillaged, and yeah. they became animals. Yeah. And they come in and try to reintegrate themselves into civilian life, and they can't because that's all they've known. And, they were like attacked by like the hippies mm-hmm. like yeah treated like shit and it's like i didn't want to go over there like yeah. i was 18 years old i've killed americans hated them you know 45 people and yeah. i'm 19 and i have no skills yeah and so i guess i'm just gonna drink and smoke until i die and that's right. how a lot of vietnam and, vets are like and fucked up like that vietnam was when we we're like oh ptsd is a real thing yeah and then the america's Everyone like <laughs> Oh well, fucking deal with it. Yeah. We don't care. And then they just like doubled down on that training into the Gulf Wars, and basically and into the Iraq War. What I'm and now PTSD is, is super common. I mean, I'm hearing that Ronald Reagan was the best president America ever had. Is that what I'm hearing? Is that what you guys are saying? I, I think you were thinking of Nixon, but yeah, <laughs> was it the, <laughs> probably both of them? Well, it was Lyndon B. Johnson who sent. Oh, it was yeah. JFK had like a couple tens of thousands of troops in vietnam and lyndon b johnson's like no we're gonna send a couple million which what and did then reagan nixon's do? like eh, let's rain it down a bit which what did reagan do reagan that was iran contra and the first gulf war would have probably oh, been tied yeah. okay. to his the decisions that makes sense okay uh which is actually what my uncle uh was a a, a sailor during oh um he was on the at the time the largest aircraft carrier during the first gulf war and that shit's fucked up too. Like he doesn't, yeah. he doesn't get the veteran discount when he goes places. Like he yeah, doesn't want to connect himself to it. There's so many veterans who don't get any benefits at all. He he's makes, able to get the benefits. He's like distanced himself from that. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Uh, my my grandfather used to be in the navy. I don't know. He might have fought in in Nam. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, definitely Gulf War. Uh, most likely it was not, um, but I don't know. I've never really asked him about it. He he doesn't seem to. A lot of people don't. Uh, a lot of people don't like talking about it, especially with like kids. Even even though like you're not. I've a never kid, thought but... about asking him about it. Yeah, well, they, yeah. It's one of those but... things. that's like it would be really good to know, but it'd be a really hard conversation. Like, yeah, I'm trying to think my uh, my my grandfather and my dad's side. Did was something, and he he would never talk about it to my dad. My great like ever, yeah, no, it's, and he was like fucked up by it. I forget don't... what it was. I don't think it was war, but I think it was something. I can't remember. You know, people, yeah, I mean, I don't blame them. It's it's just too hard to talk about because like what happens is like really bad. Like what you see, which we know. They literally just don't want to talk about. We know. They don't want to remember. And the thing is that, like, if we ask them, what are we, what are they going to say? That's any different from what we've already heard. It's just gonna be another well, fucked up horror story. Well, it is. I think it's more interesting to hear it from someone it is, who's lived it. But, but like, 
I understand why they wouldn't want to talk about it. Right. Yeah. All and I've heard of my grandpa's story of the Navy is him sleeping in a in a cot, being like, "Oh, this fucking sucks. I hated it." And I was like, "Okay," but I never, I never even thought about asking him. My great grandfather was deployed in Italy during World War Two. Oh wow! And he has a story about he there was they heard like. The Nazis, or I think it, I don't remember if it was the Nazis or the Italian army, but like they heard an ar- another group of troops coming down, so they went into this field, uh, like this high grass or like corn or whatever, and there was a farmer uh, in the field, and he saw that they like went in there, and he just kept riding his tractor and act acting casual so that he would not alert the uh, Germans or Italians or whatever about their presence and then he died in the crossfire oh, uh, wow. but like every like the farmer knew and all of the americans knew that guy was going to get shot before that happened and that's like huh. it really it makes war more somber whenever you have someone you know who had like oh. terrible things happen war war has all, ever since world war Two, even world war one war has been glorified by the Yes. The American government because they wanted young people like ourselves to join. And it makes the economy really good. It does make it does bring in some money. So they're like, Hey, uh war's fucking awesome. You get to go shoot shoot Germans, those fucking those yeah. bastards. You get to shoot them in the fucking face. Those fucking you crowd fuckers, a, yeah. Yeah, you get to travel, you get to go on all these uh, yeah. amazing adventures. And then they're like now we're basically going to throw a bunch of you at an impenetrable German uh, German bunker, and we're just going to throw dozens of you at them until you eventually break through, which is, you know, D-Day. On, really, we didn't even get to berlin first that was the russians and they were really bad about that Mm -hmm. like reading about the stuff russians did during world war ii is it's just fucked like the russians hated the they fucking despised the germans yeah the russians yeah yeah and they were worse about like that like okay you have a rifle hopefully it doesn't jam run out there if you come back well yeah that was they they should have thrown they should have thrown people didn't they who deserted or am i wrong uh, they might have done that. Okay. We did that too. Oh, okay. If you didn't get out of the trench, they'd shoot you. They would have one person come. They would have one Jesus. person stay in the trench, and they'd be like, "Okay, men, we're gonna we're gonna run yeah. across no man's land. If anyone does not come with us, you are to shoot them in the fucking head." Yeah. <laughs> For treason or yeah. desertion. Desertion. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh! What a time to be alive. <laughs> and and if and, you didn't get caught there, they would hang you for desertion. Mm-hmm. And Russia, Russia's whole war strategy was Germans, the quality of German soldiers was very high. They were very highly trained, very good, good soldiers. And very good weapons. They put a lot yeah. of money into their yeah. equipment. But Russians outnumbered them 10 to 1. So the Russians were like, we're just going to throw a bunch of our fucking soldiers at them. And hopefully they kill them all. <laughs> like, hopefully the, eventually the Russians will kill the Germans. So they just sent waves and waves of Russians trying to basically outnumber them and win by sheer number instead of skill. I don't think the Russian population, they might have recovered by now, but I I think they might still be lower they, than they were pre-World War II. World War, the most, Russians were the most heavily, had the highest mortality of any country after World War II. They were like, it was like, it's four or five million people died it was, or, it was a lot like yeah whereas like germany had like three million we had like 1.5 1 1 or something million, yeah russia like outnumbered us by millions of casualties and then they would do really fucked shit when they came <laughs> across some germans that were like not <laughs> not doing yeah. like not gonna be able to get away like they would they would just torture them like yeah they fucking hate the germans yeah. It's interesting times. 
but I, I'm I, very grateful that we didn't live during that time. I think about that a lot, actually. I think, especially, I think about that and Vietnam a lot of being like, what would I have done? Because people make fun of Trump for deserting, they make fun of Clinton for deserting. All these people who like left so they didn't get drafted. I probably would have done the same shit. I because mm-hmm. I was, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what I would be like back then. But because of the internet, I'm very up to date on politics, and I would probably try to just run for it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe if I was just, maybe if I just well, stayed Christian, I stayed Christian, and I would have fucking just been like, I gotta serve my fucking country, and I would just died. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I don't know. Well, maybe I'm good at shooting yeah. stuff. I don't know. Vietnam, yeah, the Vietnam totally took a book out of our chapter, or it took a chapter out of our book of the American Revolutionary War. Yeah. Uh, in the Tet Offensive, so did the Vietnamese teach us how to torture or is that the japanese that was japanese how to torture right um probably so we, we project really... paperclip i believe was mostly germans with yeah. some japanese uh that the cia smuggled into the country yeah um germany well, taught us actually they had the best interro- i think i've talked about this on the podcast where mm-hmm. they had the best mm-hmm. interrogator because he would just be like your buddy like they'd send one guy in to be like i'll fucking kill you i'll beat the shit out of you i'll I'll, I'll, yeah i'll rip your fingernails off and then this guy would come in and go whoa dude like get out of here like this is my friend and then they just spend like three weeks not talking about anything he'd just be like hey you know what uh they were making uh roast beef that's like an american thing right they were making roast beef for dinner tonight i figured you'd want a plate yeah yeah and and then yeah and then after three weeks he'd be like oh by the way like uh you know what a like you, america's thinking about and yeah you did, like, you did talk about that and that is a far more effective strategy than like waterboarding or whatever the fuck waterboarding super ineffective yeah, yeah. most well, torture that we learn from stealing from asian countries doesn't work right well uh, it's just it's good at hurting people though the japanese would torture our men they did the bamboo stuff right where yeah. they stick bamboo they into your fingernails and, and that and that's why yeah they, uh, would, yeah they would have fun with you they're like they had like sociopathic serial killers oh, yeah. as torturers. Yeah. Oh my they had God. stuff that made they... the Nazis like yeah. be like, dude, that's you're not that's like too far. Yeah. Ger- Germany was about learning stuff. They were like, okay, we're gonna give all these Jews meth and rape them and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. And then they would, but they'd like write down what they learned. Yeah. The, the, just the, yeah. The Japan Japanese, Japanese just were just like, hey, uh, what if we uh, rape this lady in front of her husband? And then rape him, and then kill her, and then rape him again. Like, how's he gonna feel? And then <laughs> yeah. they'd be like, probably really shitty, right? Yeah. And they'd all like well, high five. Yeah, yeah. And like, well, like when... did you get any information? Information. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, uh, that pussy so... hole tight. <laughs> <laughs> way, way Give me before... some of that pussy. <laughs> yeah. Way before World War II, Japan invaded mainland China and took over Hong Kong, and that is like one of the worst, worst events. Because they went in there and they burned and they raped and they yeah. killed and they tortured and it was just covered up. The rape and of the Nanking, Japan, yeah. which was uh, modern day Beijing, mm-hmm. is yeah, yeah. And uh, Japan has never apolog- never acknowledged <laughs> it since. That's awesome. They're like, uh, what do you mean? That was not. That was a couple of generations. The rape ago. of what? Yeah, like. Yeah. Sounds it, like some yeah. shit Chinese people would do. <laughs> like <laughs> everyone was worried about Germany giving. Like paying reparations to the Jews, but Japan's done far more yeah. worse things Japan to, to Chinese, to, yeah, and to even our guys. Yeah, not to say that Japan, Germany shouldn't do reparations for right, but Japan and, should well, also. Germany, yeah, yeah, Germany does. I don't know what they do currently, but they did do reparations for a while, right? Like Germany, yeah, they, mm-hmm. Germany actually did reparations. But they still do. Like Japan, they, they get uh, Japan doesn't owe us coronavirus anything. relief for Holocaust survivors. Like oh, that's extra. Awesome. Yeah, I didn't know that's awesome. Yeah, Japan doesn't owe us anything personally because we nuked them. I think we're square, but they should do something. I believe in reparations. I think they, we, we should do something for reparations for Black people. I still stand by that. Yeah. Since all this but, Black Lives Matter stuff has been going on, I've learned a lot more about what yeah. we did during that time. Yeah, yeah. And like before, <laughs> when I was younger, I was raised very conservative. And it was like, eh, like, like I think it was like most kinda, of us have a basic idea that they yeah, didn't have like, fair rights, and we're like, okay, but that's but things but, are better now. Yeah, and no. then like I've, I've <laughs> like we would eat slaves. We would. There were oh, multiple yeah. 
race like, wars, but it was really one sided where yeah. we would just fucking kill every black yeah. person. In yeah. Town. Or Native Americans. I think Native Americans deserve reparations. <laughs> Almost, they, they, maybe yes, more maybe more than do. black people. Re- no, like not Native to Americans, not to rank it, but like Native Americans have, do get some they got some, but I don't think it's enough. They got it's they nowhere got, near enough. They got we, some reparations, but they're not we, but yeah. It was literally genocide. Yeah, I know. We it was literally genocide. Genocided them. We turned them into alcoholics. And right now, and we put and then, them on the shittiest piece of land we could find, yeah, and said, and "Good luck." Yeah, that's our, that, that was our reparations. We gave them some shitty land, but now we have we had the Trans Pacific Pipeline that was at the end of Obama's second term, where it was like this pipeline is going to destroy this like Native American land, and it's like. Dude, they're come on. Yeah, yeah. It's like tw- it was like twenty twelve or whatever. It's like, dude, stop kicking them. They're down already. Yeah, like <laughs> this is such an old thing. Leave them alone. But you know, that's a- that's obviously like an oil thing. So they're gonna. What's the old meme like? The leave them alone. Yeah. Like leave Britney alone. Yeah, bre- leave Britney. Leave the Native Americans okay. alone. Like. Yeah. Uh, before we close it, I will. I do. We oh damn, to- we're an hour in. Yeah, we have to talk about Borat. <laughs> because Rudy Giuliani, before, okay, so I told Shane some of the stuff, but I looked up more about Rudy Giuliani on Wikipedia. He was the mayor of New York during 9 11. He, he was Time Person of the Year during 2001 because of he was the mayor of 9 11, and people gave him a lot of props for what he did. Uh, he's a staunch conservative. People really didn't like him before 9 11. And then a little bit after 9 11, people just went back to not liking him because he's kind of shitty. And he's just been a huge spokesperson for every Republican. He was huge, huge spokesperson for Bush, huge spokesperson for McCain and all the guys. So right now he's actually Trump's attorney and he's the one who's trying to do the story about Hunter Biden having connections to Ukraine and Russia and China. And they're true, but the media will not pick up these stories. They refuse to pick up these stories and Trump could talk about these stories he did during the debate tonight but i was theorizing today at work like why doesn't trump ever talk about it like last the last debate i was like why is trump talking about that hunter biden does crack no that's who cares and i realized it's because if trump brings up hunter biden's shady deals well trump has uh offshore accounts in foreign countries and (laughs) If we bring up Hunter Biden, then we have to bring up what Trump does. And we're talking about what Hunter Biden does versus Trump. So we're not even talking about Biden. And then we're also talking about the sitting president who's benefiting from deals he's making (laughs) financially. Uh, And they brought up tonight and literally what happened was Biden said, oh, yeah, well, you do this. And then that's what happened. So didn't really get Trump very far. But Rudy Giuliani did all that stuff. Borat 2 comes out tomorrow. It's out by the time you guys are listening to this. I'm so excited. And there's a scene where he is uh, trying to take his mic off by putting his hands through, untucking his shirt. Problem is, his hand is clearly where his crotch is. He is 100% hand on his dick. Now you can say hand on dick for non-perverted reasons. But there is a female like uh, interviewer with him. Apparently, in, apparently in the movie, she does ask him to go back to her room. Like she's instigating it. Yeah. And then Borat runs in and yells, "Stop! She's only fifteen. She's too old." <laughs> <laughs> and so Rudy Giuliani's like, <laughs> "I forgot that joke from the first yeah. one." <laughs> My wife was like, "Was like this car." She her vagine worked perfectly. <laughs> she had nice breasts, and then when she turned fifteen, everything started going. Down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you if you like Eric Andre, you would love Borat. It's very similar. Yeah, yeah. Very similar. Like, uh, they go out in public mm-hmm. and interact with people. Those are the best scenes. That it's like kind of like Jackass Eric Andre yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of style of humor. The the scene the the part where he's like. He's like talking to this guy. He's trying to tell him like how he's trying to like Americanize him or whatever. He's saying this is like this is an American joke. He's like this suit is black, not yeah. And he goes this suit is not black. And he's like (laughs) no, no, this suit is black, not. And he goes this suit is black, not. (laughs) Yeah. And then he's like no. And he's like and then he goes this suit is black. Pause. Pause. And he just like waits for like not forever. And no, no, no. Borat goes this suit is not. 
or the, the suit, suit is black. black. Pause not. Pause not. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, <laughs> and then that, it's so goes, simple. The suit is so... black. And so then you would say, and then he goes, nah. nah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so obvious that like he's trolling him, but people don't know. So it's so funny. Yeah. Like, uh, really, there's really a scene where he's like. They're doing like the family dinner, <laughs> and he's like, "This is my son," and it's like a, a d- naked dude with a giant, <laughs> yeah. giant dick. Yeah. But Sasha Baron Cohen is in the picture hugging him. Yeah. <laughs> no, his face is right next yeah. to the guy's <laughs> <It's laughs> <a> dick. <laughs> he's like, "Should I show them pictures of my family?" Yeah. She's like, yeah. "Well, yeah. Do you yeah. have some?" And the first picture is normal, yeah. like of him like with his arms around his son, yeah. and then it goes to his cock. <laughs> yeah. No, him like holding Borat with his cock completely out, yeah. and then it's Sasha. Baron Conan right next to Scott going <laughs> like that. Yeah. No, I mean, there's so many great moments. Um, I just thought, oh, uh, when he goes to the feminist uh, the was, feminist group Yeah. and he's like, so in Kazakhstan, no more than five women are allowed in a room at the same time except for brothels and graveyards. <laughs> <laughs> and then the woman's, he's like, so what is feminism? And the woman's like, well, it's a belief that women have the same equal rights as men. And he la- laughed. <laughs> and the woman's like, why are you laughing? It's so funny. Uh, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to stick every joke from the movie. But like it is he like, <laughs> yeah. The, when he, does, national he does the Kazakhstan national anthem in the style of the American national the anthem. Two, yeah, and he's like, At a ro- like a big like, rodeo. Kazakhstan is so great. The other countries are for the gays or something like weird no, like that. All the other countries are ruined by little girls. Yeah, or something yeah, like yeah. That. <laughs> Kazakhstan is a real country. Yeah, but it's like he just made up a bunch of shit. <laughs> well, uh, before he God, sings, so funny. he's like. I support your war, your war on terror. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, hell yeah. He's like, my name is Borat. I come from Kazakhstan. Can I say it first? We support your war of terror. I want you guys to kill every single fucking terrorist. And they're like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they kill every single terrorist. Yeah. He's like, I hope George Bush drinks the blood of every man, woman, and child in Iraq. Yeah. And they're like, <laughs> going, yeah. Wait, uh, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> May George Bush drink the blood of every single man, woman, and child of Iraq. <laughs> May you destroy their country so that for the next thousand years, not even a single lizard will survive in their desert. Now I'm going to sing the guys yeah. yeah. yeah, he does it. He does it like a like a rodeo. Yeah. <laughs> He's like at a rodeo. <laughs> I love it's so it. So funny, and everyone's like, "What the fuck is it's he like, doing?" They're like in disbelief. Who's that guy, Ezra or whatever? Who's the guy who's like in Russia? Blah blah does you or whatever. I don't know. It's that guy, but he's like cranked up to eleven, and he's like super vulgar and offensive. <laughs> It's amazing. It's so funny. They go they go to the Jewish bed and breakfast. <laughs> I don't even remember this part. And he goes inside and there's all the paintings of Jews and he's like, Why do you have all these paintings of Jews? And she's like, I'm Jewish and he goes Oh <laughs> and the manager is like, We have to get the fuck out of here. They're going to kill us. <laughs> God, that movie's that movie's gold. All right, it's so good. So yeah, Borat Two comes out and it's gonna have a scene that th- cancels Rudy Giuliani. Except I'm pretty sure nothing bad's gonna happen to him. No, he tried to. The thing is, some people online I already saw conservatives online saying, "What? What's the problem?" She invited him back to uh, her his room, two consenting adults. And I'm like, I. That's that's not <laughs> no, that's not how it works. Which, which the actress playing Borat's daughter is like 24, but she's claiming to be 15 the whole movie. Right. That's like the only thing we know that's been spoiled about Borat 2 so far. So like, I can't wait. Because I, I don't know what's coming at all. I literally have no idea what direction they're going in. <laughs> he brings a black prostitute to a southern dinner party. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and the, the pastor mm. just gets up and leaves. Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, Okay, let's close this uh, one out. It's so good. Watch Borat.
Yeah, yeah watch Borat and then watch Borat 2. Yeah. Alright, uh... Goodbye. 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 Kazakhstan is the greatest country.